Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk about recession and the ongoing threat to the global economy. It's recently been announced that the Netherlands, which is a major international exporter of oil and gas, is now officially in recession. And this means that two of the four largest economies in the European Union, Germany and the Netherlands, have both fallen into recession. And one of the key contributors to the fall in GDP in both of these economies is the extremely high levels of inflation that have been experienced over the course of the last 18 months. Now, as it stands at the moment, there are officially seven countries in the world that are in recession, but there are a further 24 countries that have posted negative GDP for their most recent results and therefore are at risk of recession if they experience a second quarter of falling GDP. So in today's video, we'll have a look at the seven countries that are currently in recession. We'll go through the list of the additional 24 countries that are at risk of going into recession. We'll then have a look at some of the details as to why the Netherlands and Germany are in recession, We'll talk about a very surprising country that's in recession right now, Saudi Arabia, which is an oil-rich nation and one of the biggest exporters of oils. So we'll go into the details as to what's going on in the Saudi Arabian economy. We'll talk about what's happening in New Zealand, which is also in recession and isn't a country that I've covered in detail before. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think is going on right now in the global economy and what the risks are for more countries entering recession over the course of the next three to six months. This chart shows percentage GDP growth in the last two quarters for the G20, which are the 20 largest economies in the world. And I'm starting with the G20 because in terms of relevance to the global economy, obviously the biggest economies have the biggest impact. And I've ranked this table from the worst performing countries for GDP for the last quarter down to the best performing. And as you can see, there are three countries that have posted negative GDP growth for their most recent quarter. And Germany has posted zero growth. And if you look along to the second column, which shows the previous quarter's GDP growth, you can see that three out of these four countries have had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which is the technical definition of a recession. And these three countries, all of which I mentioned at the start of the video, are the Netherlands, which has just entered recession, Saudi Arabia, which is now also in recession, and Germany, which has been in recession for the previous two quarters and hasn't posted any positive growth yet, so is still technically in recession. But as you can see from this chart, the country that's posted the biggest fall in GDP in the most recent quarter is Italy. And if economic performance continues as it is right now in Italy, then it's at risk of going into recession when it posts its next quarter results for September 2023. So what this chart shows is that three out of the top four economies in the European Union are either in recession or at risk of recession, being Germany, which is the largest, Italy, which is the third largest, France is actually the second largest, and the Netherlands at number four. The United Kingdom, which is actually the second largest economy in Europe, is no longer included in the European Union because of Brexit. And these statistics really show the devastating impact that Russia's invasion of Ukraine has had on the European Union. Prior to the invasion starting, the three biggest importers of oil and gas products were Germany, the Netherlands and Italy. Germany and Italy had both built up infrastructure to use natural gas that was being supplied directly by Russia. And the Netherlands is a major player in the international trade of oil and gas. So it was importing lots of products from Russia, which it was then turning around and exporting to the rest of the world. And as a direct result of the sanctions that have been applied by all three of these countries, the price of energy products rose significantly. That's driven up inflation, that had an impact on consumer spending, and that's ultimately led to all of these countries either being in recession or on the verge of recession. And the other country on this list, which is now officially in recession, is Saudi Arabia. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is quite surprising because Saudi Arabia is an oil-rich nation, and as a result, you would have expected the economy to be very healthy. However, what's happened in terms of the oil markets over the course of the last 12 months have had a devastating impact on Saudi Arabia. As a result of rising inflation and rising interest rates, we've seen a slowdown in global activity. And as a result of that, oil prices have come down significantly over the course of the last 12 months. And this has had a major impact on Saudi Arabia because it's a net exporter. And when the value of your main product falls in the international markets, that means that you start earning less. But in addition to that, Saudi Arabia is also a founder member of OPEC, which is the agreement between some of the major oil producing nations to act as a cartel and to limit the amount of oil that they supply to the market to keep the prices up. 
And over the course of the last 12 months, we have seen a number of announcements from OPEC, which have stated that they've agreed to cut the amount of oil that's being produced in order to push prices up. But the flip side of that agreement for countries like Saudi Arabia is that when you're deliberately cutting your production, it means that you're going to earn less money because you're selling less barrels in the international markets. Now, if we quickly run down the rest of this list, you can see that there are a number of countries that have posted GDP growth of less than 0.5% in the last quarter. So these countries are achieving GDP growth, but it's relatively low. And the big question is whether these economies can continue this trend and actually move into significant growth of more than 1%, or if this is just a short-term position and there's a chance of moving back into negative territory. And the countries with this low level of growth are Singapore with 0.1%, the UK and Australia at 0.2%, Turkey and Switzerland at 0.3%, Spain and South Africa at 0.4% and France at 0.5%. And then finally, the countries in the G20 that are now starting to see reasonable growth are South Korea at 0.6%, Argentina at 07 China and Canada at 08 Mexico at 09 Japan at one5 India and Brazil 1.9, the United States, which has the second highest GDP growth rate in the G20 at 2.4, and Indonesia, which is top of the shop with 3.9%. So the overall summary here is that there are currently three countries in the G20 that are in recession, the Netherlands, Saudi Arabia and Germany. And the country that is currently at risk of going into recession when the next quarter results are posted is Italy. This chart ranks the countries with the lowest GDP growth in the world over the course of the last quarter. And as you can see, right at the top of this list is Nigeria, which posted negative growth of almost 16% in the quarter ending March 23, which represents a swing of almost 27% in one quarter. Quite a remarkable outcome. And if you're interested in me digging deeper into what's going on in Nigeria, please let me know in the comments below. The country with the second biggest fall in GDP in terms of its most recent results, which posted a fall of almost 7% for March 23. And this compared to positive growth of over 3% in the previous quarter, which represents a swing of more than 10% in one quarter. So again, a complete collapse. Now, I have posted videos on Peru previously. It is an economy in crisis, but clearly that crisis is getting worse. Cape Verde is the third on this list with a fall of 6.1%. Poland has come in at number four with a fall of 3.7%, which compares to growth of 3.8% in the previous quarter. So a negative swing of more than 7%. Ecuador saw negative growth of over 3.4%, Ireland 2.8%, Trinidad and Tobago 2.7%, Lesotho 1.7% and Sweden 1.5%. And if we take a step back and look what's going on with this chart, you can see that the figures for the most recent quarters that have been posted by these countries, and if you look on the right-hand side, you can see that some of them are for the first quarter of 2023 ending March. Some of them are for June 2023, and others are actually from 2022. You can see that there is a clear trend here for many countries moving from significant positive growth in the previous quarter to significant negative growth in the most recent quarter. And as I've just pointed out, a lot of these countries haven't actually posted their results for June yet. So there is a strong likelihood that when we see those results, there will be a further decline in GDP. Because in the second quarter of 2023, there was a lot of price pressure in many economies. And those price pressures mean that consumers have less disposable income. Therefore, they spend less, which will often then lead to a contraction in GDP. Now, in terms of picking out which seven countries are currently in recession, the first that we come to on this list is Estonia, which is a relatively small country in Eastern Europe. Population is currently around 1.3 million, and it's officially the 102nd largest economy in the world. Next on the list of countries that are officially in recession is Taiwan, which is obviously slightly controversial because China does not see Taiwan as being an independent country. It believes that the island of Taiwan is part of China. However, the previous ruling party of China, which fled China in the 1940s and established Taiwan as an independent nation, obviously believes that they are an independent country. And various countries around the world have differing opinions on this. 
Now, the island of Taiwan has a population of around 24 million people. And if you are of the opinion that Taiwan is an independent country, then it's officially ranked as the 21st largest economy in the world. The next country officially in recession is the Netherlands, which we'll come on to talk about in a bit more detail in a moment. The fourth country in recession is Hungary, which has a population of around 10 million and is officially the 59th largest economy in the world. Saudi Arabia, which is the 17th largest economy in the world, is next on the list and has a population of around 40 million. New Zealand, which has a population of around 5 million and is the 52nd largest economy in the world, is number 6 on the list. And Germany, which is the 4th largest economy in the world and has a population of around 83 million, rounds off the list. So let's have a quick look as to what's caused the recession in some of these countries. This chart shows the quarterly movement in the GDP growth rate for the Netherlands over the course of the last three years. And as you can see in the two most recent quarters, the Netherlands has recorded negative growth of 0.4% and 0.3%. And as I mentioned right at the start of the video, the technical definition of a recession is when a country posts two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Now, despite having a population of only 17 million people, the Netherlands is actually a really big player in oil and gas partly as a result of its location, it's located on the coast in Europe, partly due to the country's seafaring history, and partly due to the fact that it has its own oil and gas facilities. And this chart which shows the balance of trade for the Netherlands, which is basically the difference between the value of all of your exports and the cost of all of your imports, shows that the Netherlands is a net exporter. It's got a positive balance of trade. It's making more money from its exports than it's paying out for its imports. And the reason for that is that the Netherlands doesn't just export its own oil and gas. It actually imports crude oil from other countries, refines that oil into finished products, and then exports those products all around the world. So you may be wondering why the Netherlands is in recession, because this sounds like a great business model. But the problem that the Netherlands has is that a lot of the oil that it's exporting, it has to import. And the major fluctuations in oil prices that we've seen over the course of the last 18 months or so since Russia's invasion of Ukraine have had a really big impact on the Netherlands economy. This chart shows the movement in inflation in the Netherlands over the course of the last five years. And the reason that I wanted to put this chart up is that it shows the really big spike in prices that the Netherlands experienced. And in September and October, the annual rate of inflation rose above 14%. And over the course of the last 12 months, inflation has remained significantly above the target rate of 2 to 3%. And if we look at what's happened to food inflation, you can see that the situation is even worse. With prices rising at an annual rate of more than 17% in January, February and March, and are currently still above 10%. Now, the direct impact of this sharp and prolonged rise in prices led to a reduction in consumer spending. And this chart shows the movement in consumer spending over the course of the last 10 years. And the reason that I wanted to post this chart is that you can see that there has been a pronounced trend. There is a very clear line in terms of the increase in consumer spending over this time. But if you look at the most recent period, there has been a significant downturn in consumer spending. And that's as a result of the fact that people have less disposable income. When food and energy and transport costs and everything that you have to pay on a daily basis starts to cost more, that means that you spend less on other items. If your monthly or weekly disposable income is falling, then you have to cut your costs. So you may decide to cut back on all of the things that are not necessities. And that's what's been happening in the Netherlands. That means that all of the companies that have lost that trade have reported less profit and therefore there has been an over overall reduction in GDP. So once again here, we can see the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, because as a result of that increase in prices, which fed through into inflation in the whole of the world, that ultimately led to a reduction in the amount of money that people had to spend, and therefore has led to the recession in the Netherlands. This chart shows the movement in the balance of trade for Germany over the course of the last 12 months. And once again here, you can see that Germany is a net exporter. It's got a positive balance of trade. So unlike a lot of countries that we talk about on the channel, where they are net importers and therefore at the mercy of what's happening in the international markets, Germany isn't in that position. So you may be thinking, well, why is Germany in recession if it's a net exporter? And the answer to that question is that despite the fact that Germany is a net exporter, Prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Germany was the largest single buyer of Russian gas. Over the course of the last 30 years, Germany had become dependent on the import of Russian gas 
for both the production of electricity and also to supply its consumers. So as the price of natural gas rose in the international markets, this had a major impact on the German economy. This chart shows the official rate of inflation for Germany over the course of the last five years. And as you can see, in the later part of 2022 and the early part of 2023, inflation rose above 9%. And in exactly the same way as we've just discussed for the Netherlands, that had an impact on consumer spending. If you look at the shape of the chart between 2014 and 2020, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, you can see that there is a clear upward trend. If you now look at 2022 and the first half of 2023, you can see that firstly, that trend is at a lower level. So if you were to draw the line all the way from 2014 right to 2023, there is a significant drop in consumer spending. But if you look at what's happened in 2023, there is an actual fall in consumer spending. And this is as a direct result of prices simply getting too expensive, people not having enough money to be able to do all the things they want to do, and therefore they've had to reduce what they're spending. And that's had a really big impact on the German economy over the course of the last six to nine months. Now this chart shows the balance of trade for Saudi Arabia over the course of the last five years. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, Saudi Arabia is an oil rich nation. It's exporting large amounts of oil all around the world. So not surprisingly, the balance of trade for Saudi Arabia is in positive territory, apart from a very brief period during 2020 when we made the COVID-19 lockdowns globally and demand for oil fell significantly. And the shape of this chart is really interesting because in 2021 and the first half of 2022, there was significant growth in Saudi Arabia's balance of trade as a result of an increase in demand for oil and also as a result of an increase in the price of oil, particularly in the first part of 2022, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, when we saw a major spike in oil prices. However, if you look at what's happened over the course of the last 12 months, there has been a significant fall in Saudi Arabia's balance of trade for two reasons. Firstly, the price of oil per barrel has been falling over that period as a result of the slowdown in the global economy. So that's obviously bad news from Saudi Arabia because even if they're selling the same amount of oil, if the price is going down, then that means that your revenue is falling. But in addition to those fall in prices, the cartel that Saudi Arabia is part of called OPEC have agreed to cut the amount of oil that all of the countries are producing on a number of occasions over the course of the last six months or so. So this has been a double whammy from Saudi Arabia's point of view. Firstly, it's earning less per barrel for the oil it is selling. And secondly, it's now selling less oil because of these restrictions. And as a direct result of these dynamics, GDP in the last two quarters has been negative 1.4% and negative 0.1%. So that means that Saudi Arabia is now technically in recession. And the reason I wanted to post this is that it shows that even though a country may have a huge amount of natural resources and potential to become very wealthy, it's not immune from going into recession because the price of oil is not dictated by individual countries. It's set in the international markets. And when the price of oil starts to come down, all of the major oil producing countries start to suffer. This chart shows the quarterly movement in New Zealand's GDP over the course of the last three years. And the reason I wanted to post this is that we do have some viewers in New Zealand and we haven't covered the country in any detail before. So I thought this was an opportune moment to mention New Zealand to give them a shout out. Now, New Zealand is an island. Well, technically it's two islands, but the point is that it is an island nation located off the southeast coast of Australia, but is obviously entirely independent from Australia. New Zealand and Australia have a very friendly rivalry, particularly when it comes to sports like rugby and cricket. The country has a population of around 5 million people, 6 million cows and 25 million sheep. And its main exports are meat and dairy products and its main imports are energy products. So not surprisingly, New Zealand has a negative balance of trade. And obviously over the course of the last 18 months, if you're a net importer of energy products, that's going to put pressure on prices. And this chart shows the movement in the official rate of inflation for New Zealand over the course of the last three years, which shows that from the start of 2022 onwards, inflation has been running at around 6 or 7%, which is significantly above the target rate of 2 to 3%. And in order to try to combat those high levels of inflation, the New Zealand Central Bank has introduced 12 interest rate rises since the end of 2021. And this has had a direct negative impact on consumer spending and led to the current recession. 
So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video really to talk about what the risks of recession are for the global economy. In the first part of 2022, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there was a lot of talk about a potential global recession. The price of oil and gas and food substances and a variety of other commodities rose sky high. And that caused high levels of inflation, which were on top of the inflation that everybody already had from the COVID-19 bounce back when we released all of the restrictions. And so the outlook was relatively negative. However, over the course of the last six to nine months, what we've seen is that the global slowdown, the reduction in the global economy, actually has resulted in a fall in oil and gas prices and other commodity prices. And as a direct result of this, there was a lot of talk about a soft landing, that the global economy would be able to style out all of these price movements and carry on as normal. However, what we've seen from the data in today's video is that the impact of the high levels of inflation is still hurting a lot of economies. And the Netherlands has now joined Germany, Saudi Arabia, New Zealand, Taiwan, Hungary and Estonia as being officially in recession. But as we saw from the most recent GDP data, there are a number of other countries that are potentially on the verge of recession who've posted negative GDP growth in their most recent quarter, the most notable of which being Italy. But there are other countries that have seen wild swings in their GDP, such as Nigeria and Poland. And if the problems caused by high prices and reductions in consumer spending continue in those economies, there is a very real risk that we could see more countries going into recession. And the problem with a country going into recession is that it has a knock-on impact because all countries in the world are importing and exporting goods to other countries. So when your economy goes into recession, that means that your consumers are spending less, they're buying less things that are being imported, and so demand for other countries' products falls proportionately. And this is what's known as the ripple effect or the domino effect. As one country goes down, it can take others with it. Now, we saw from the data that the GDP growth in the USA is actually one of the strongest. It's the second highest in the G20. So that's good news because the USA is the biggest economy in the world. It has the biggest influence on all the other economies. But the second biggest economy in the world is China. And if you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've posted a number of videos on China. There are major concerns as to what's happening in the Chinese economy. We've seen significantly lower growth than expected in the first part of 2023. And all of the indicators are pointing to the fact that China is going into a slowdown and that will have a major knock on impact to the global economy. And there is a high likelihood that the slowdown in China could accelerate some of these other countries moving into into a state of recession. So I think the overall summary of today's video is that we've currently got seven countries in recession, a further 24 that are at risk of going into recession over the course of the next three months. And if we see a continued slowdown in China's economy, that is going to have a really big impact on the global economy and could push more and more countries into recession over the course of the next three to six to 12 months. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, you found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.